It is Enlightened Up. You pretty much know from the title what it is. Uh, it's time to lighten up. Add some light, add some levity, add some goodness, add some heart, add some love to your life. And that's what we're about. And, of course, comedy and laughter. This is Craig Shoemaker, your host. And, uh, you know, I came up with this show because I'm getting tired. I'm actually at the point at, at this juncture that I hate people. I know that's completely hypocritical, but I'm getting to hate people. I'm getting so pissed off at, uh, it, it's ironic that I, I hate people that hate. So that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But I, I just have a problem. I have an issue with so much that's going on here and how we're not listening to one another. As soon as we get some smell that uh, someone might be, you know, a Trumper or someone might be, uh, you know, a liberal or whatever it is, we just attack with those assumptions and there's no discussion. By the way, die being the operative root is die means two. So there's no discussion. It's monologues. It's a series of monologues projected onto others. I just got to know a Twitter thing with this guy. I said, look, one more time you do this, I'm going to block you. And then he does this whiny thing about that. I'm going to block him. I wouldn't have to even say that I'm going to block you if you would just have some decency, have some decorum, which is exactly what my post was about to begin with. But people can't see it because they don't want to see it. They're blind with rage. So anyway, I sought this person out, our guest today, because, you know, I dig the guy's energy and I just saw a post on Instagram. I said, ah, I got to reach out. to. Of course. He says, yeah, of course, I'll show up for you and, and be on your show. Francis Cronin is here all the way from Ireland. He walked here. He walked <laughs> yeah. here to Los Angeles, but literally, quite literally. Yeah. How far did you walk? I did a little walk a while ago. It was yeah. uh, it came about uh, over five hundred miles, San Francisco to LA, and then I did one across Ireland from coast to coast. Um, that was about. Oh, I you have the perfect accent miles. to say that. But it reminds me of the song <laughs> "I Will Walk." Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do yeah. you remember that song? Yeah, exactly. Well, that was yeah, that was the theme tune people kept sending me. But uh, yeah, I just I like getting out there. I like getting away from all the stories and all the distractions, and I like to suffer a little bit on my own. And that suffering gives me a little bit of um, a, a clearer, more surgical perspective on base reality. Yeah, that's what I'm up to. Well, the reason I wanted to have you on is also you you took the comedy route along with the spiritual route. And it's one of my goals is to build a bridge from the woo-woo people, you know, woo-woo, hey, yeah, I'm all yeah. spiritual. I'm more spiritual than you are. Yeah. You know, it's like a contest, you know. Oh. I go to the right guru. And then the, the comedians, oh, I'm the best comedian. I'm the, this is the type of comedy you should go for. it. But we need to blend it together, you yeah. know, and come together. Yeah, yeah. I, here, look, I think you, most people as they get older, or if they're lucky enough to, to see some wild stuff in their youth, uh, they'll generally move towards being a unifying force on the planet. And so this, some of the things that presented themselves to me throughout my life have made me think, oh, I don't want to see any more of that. Mm. I have the capacity to, like, without being too preachy, kind of remind people that we can just have a good time for the finite amount of time we're on the planet, have a laugh, mm. not take things too seriously, yeah. kind of look at ourselves like little avatars or characters. And then that we can walk around the planet and see, can we get our character to do some gnarly, amazing stuff? Right. And stand-up comedy is the hardest thing that I've ever tried. I was in the army for a while, done a little bit of survival. Oh, I survival love stuff. harder than the army. Oh, man. Stand <laughs> well, hey, look. But wow. Would, no, put it, put it this way. The, the, I've never heard that one before. Well, just a different game, different sport. Oh, of you know? course it is, yeah. So, so the military, you're, you know, you've got your brothers, you've got your sisters, and you move forward. That's true. You do objective. have a team. But in comedy, you don't have a team whatsoever. It's you solo. Yeah, so you'll yeah. suffer individually, whereas uh, um, the Army's more of a team sport. Now, obviously, the Army can do things that comedy can never do, uh, but, you know, you, you're killing in, in both places. Yeah. So, uh, hopefully. Or be killed. Yeah, or, <laughs> or, or be killed, yeah. Because there are, there are forms of, of dying on stage, that's for sure, that it can oh. feel worse than death. Yeah, and um, it's an odd how that is, isn't it? It's a, it's a, it's a feeling. Of, it's an energy that's in the air that's just going, wow. Yeah, and it is a suffering. It's interesting you've used that word. It, it, it's yeah. a bit of a suffering because it's not go suffering is usually it's not going the way you had planned or you would like it to go. Yeah, and then it, and your and resistance it, to that. Yeah, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure just by looking at some of your stuff and just looking around the office as I come in here, 
if you if you get to the point where you can realize that suffering and hurdles is like literally one upping yourself and making yourself stronger. It's like yes. doing reps at the gym. Yeah. Then you become a beast. And if you can actually hold on to that thought on a daily basis and navigate the world with Come on, yeah, like, right, give, me, right. give me some problems. You can say anything you want on yeah. here, by the way. Yeah, I'll bring it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll no, but yeah, basically, if you can use that, then you can yeah. you can pretty much tackle everything and suffer less. That's true. So you suffer exactly where you want to suffer, especially if you can pull yourself back from. Um, I, and that resistance that you were talking about, those are, those are the reps. Yeah. Because when you lift weights, it is resistance that you're going against, yeah. right? Yeah. And the more you do it... The more you let go, yeah. the better things are. The stronger you are. Yeah. I just had an incident. By the way, I was going to say something about that you said earlier um, th that you were talking about. Uh, I, I just wanted to address that if you are, um, I just went blank, by the way. I literally I went blank. Well, yeah. that's a good thing. The, the gap between thoughts is where all the wisdom is. So you just got wiser, my friend. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? If I, if that's the case, if it comes to gaps being <laughs> wise, I'm a guru. I'm I'm on I'm on top of a mountain with a big white beard. Well, I I actually look at that. You know, the deterioration of your mind as, as you get older. It seems to be it seems to be a common thing. You know. Yeah. But it, there is obviously there's a, a great sadness, and we've all you know been close to people who are suffering in that way. But one way that I allowed myself to not suffer thinking about somebody else maybe moving towards you know. Uh, cognitive issues not that you're going through them Craig. <laughs> but like uh, one, one way to look at it is that they're slowly they're slowly defragmenting into the collective consciousness of the universe yeah and that is a lot happier than saying oh bye bye nana you know well the other the other thing is what just took place for me is something that's been happening for me lately is like well great yeah. great that you had that moment that you're not going to edit out yeah that you're not being perfect Oh, yeah. Because you're not being the host that has the answers and the quips and the, and everything else. It's like, well, here's a breakdown of who I really am, which is where we want to go anyway. Yeah, yeah, and and being like the the market nowadays in showbiz, yeah, is truth. If yes. you're not telling the truth yeah. or or pointing out that something is yeah. a conspiracy, <laughs> you're missing you're missing the tidal wave of attention that is available to everybody. So That's unless right. you're unless you're literally honing in on who you actually are and pulling back that facade and trying to be as natural and honest as possible. Mm. Like people are just getting way too smart so they can see you in 4k. Right. They've got 300 million years of intuition. Mm -hmm. Nothing you say, they won't believe anything you say unless it looks like you mean it, unless it's connected to your voice and they'll pick it up auditively. They'll pick it up visually. So whenever anyone makes like a mistake, I think that's starting to register more as, oh, I can trust this person. This person is truthful. And it's related to what I was getting to. But I can't remember the premise of where it was coming from. But yeah. uh, if you share your truth or your experience, no one can deny it. They can deny your opinion. They can deny your tribe that you're in or what you believe. Yeah. But they can't deny something that happened for you, a discovery, yeah. the suffering that you did, which I would love you to be specific on. So you mentioned some suffering and and how that becomes your teacher, right, is basically what you're saying. Yeah. And that's been the case for me. I had a case the other day, horrible suffering. I've been dealing with my ex-wife 15 years. I mean, I'm wow. happily married for 14, 13 years. But it, it, she's still at it. And it is suffering. Mm -hmm. But who's doing the suffering is me because of the resistance, mm -hmm. because of the holding on, because you're not going to do that to me, because I'm going to fight back. And I'm fighting back a person that has all the skills and I do not possess those skills because I don't have a desire to do that. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I'm not going out and get my weaponry. Yeah. You know? So I'm, I'm a, a wiffle ball bat and she's a scud missile, mm -hmm. scud missile coming at me and I'm going, I am not equipped. Oh, yeah. and that, Well, that's going to force you into some sort of reaction. Force right? me into something, so some reaction. But you know what the reaction is now? Please. I just let go. I just signed the papers for the last time. Never have to speak to her again. Can yeah. I shake your hand, brother? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's freedom. Yeah. That's a freedom that I think you're talking about with the suffering is we only suffer by choice. Yeah. Well, if you can. Yeah. And, yeah. And uh, some, some of the, well, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Just yeah. the emancipation from that thought. Emancipation around. is what it feels like. Oh. I really let go. She could say anything she wants about me now mm. and it's just going to just go away. 
I don't have to say any word in defense in return. I don't have to tell other people who I am. Now, do you know what the biggest challenge, I think, and here, look, who am I? I'm a, what am I? Look uh, like. You're a guest on the show, and you're a guest here for a reason. Well, because you resonate in connection with me. That's the reason you're here. Look, I know huge celebrities. We have them on. Yeah. We'll have more of them on. I reached out to you because you were saying to me without saying anything that I wanted to have a conversation with you. Well, you're a unifier. Yes, that's you true. Don't, you don't want to divide. That's true. Yeah. And uh, if you're paying attention on this planet, there's two types of people. It's yeah. not Republican, Democrat. It's not no. black, white. It's not whatever. Right. It's unifiers and dividers. Yeah, there you go. I agree with you. It's a beautiful thing. And you're another unifier. Yeah. So I'm recognizing the unifiers instead of trying to convince the dividers to come to me. Yeah, because no, and because you know, no one can be convinced. No. They li and it, and it's not it's not that anyone's better just by being able to see these things. Yeah. But at some point, they think you are. By the way, they think you're arrogant and stuff like that. I get that label. Oh well. Even well, if you share it, it is your truth, which is what we should be sharing. Wow. They've adopted such a paradigm of lies that they are angry with your truth and will fight you for to the death well, yeah. to get their truth, what they, which they think is truth, across. Yeah, well, they're, they're forgetting a few things. People, <laughs> people who are trying to control others forget the finite nature of life. Like, they've literally, they're so distracted by the things that are put in front of them intentionally to distract them That's right. that they don't look <laughs> inward and figure out that they've got a certain amount of pulses, heartbeats left in their life, mm -hmm. and they could be gone tomorrow, the next yeah, year. Right. So they probably, they'll probably need to suffer at a level whereby they lose something that was so close to them that the veil, the thin facade that you're going to live forever will be drawn away. Then once you suffer it, that's why I like to suffer. I like to get a little cold, a little wet. I'll jump in the cold water. Or I'll well, walk 500 miles. <laughs> yeah, just any, anything that pulls me out of the competing narratives that are passing through mm. our consciousness at all times. So if you're, if you're on your cell phone all day, or you're watching, or you're walking down the street and you're watching a Coca-Cola commercial, or you're watching a billboard, you are literally, intentionally, through marketing, being distracted from a level of consciousness that's available to every single person. It's a birthright, and it is your connection to something much f bigger than anything you're ever going to accomplish on the planet. And it's available, and all you have to do is go out and sit under a tree in silence for about an hour, and it'll come to you. Exactly. And so, and the fears will go away, which is what they rely on. They rely on promoting the fears and that fright makes them right. A and they will control you because you are empowering them mm -hmm. to dictate how you feel about yourself. And all of my defenses, mm -hmm. it's trying to convince those same people, yeah. power structure people. And by the way, my ex-wife has no money or anything like that, but there's a power in people like mm -hmm. that. And they get people to gravitate around them. Even though I used to say, what, what, what could she possibly do to anyone? You know, you can understand it with a leader. They can take away your job or whatever it is. I never understand how people follow narcissists into this well that there's no escape. There's no light. Mm. It's amazing to me and how they can get people to collude with them and join them in their battle. They're, it's amazing to me. And that's how people do go to battle. They are also in wars since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. They have been convinced that their enemy has been defined for them. Mm -hmm. And now this is the way out of your fears yeah. that they just handed you. It's an unbelievable mixture mm -hmm. that it's, if you do take the time and step back like you're talking about, mm -hmm. you get it. Mm -hmm. My book is called Get Out of Line and Into Alignment. Oh, beautiful. So we get in lines right away. See, that's immediately clear from that title, what that book is about, to somebody who's experienced it just for one second in their life. That's right. You've been and in alignment. And it'll change your life for the rest of your life. That's it'll right. go down as one of the most memorable experiences. Yeah. And for people on their deathbeds, getting into alignment is somewhat akin to... Uh, uh, enlightenment. Enlightenment. And they'll, they'll mention it on their deathbed of, as one of the most inspiring moment. Some people will also reference a DMT trip or mushrooms, but you can get there just by sitting in silence and inhaling and pulling yourself out of all of the distractions that are presented to us on a daily basis. All these patterns were pattern recognition machines. When you go out into nature, the patterns are much more chaotic. And so you don't get caught in these traps. You're in a more kind of syncopated you're in nirvana, and if you're nirvana, you, 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 it's when you're not in a state of fear or desire. Yeah. 
If you have either fear or desire, it takes you out of nirvana. It takes you out of your peace. It takes you out of your true self, which is what we're talking about earlier is truth. Our true authentic self wants to be this powerful light that shines bright. Yeah. That's what it wants. Yeah. That's what the big G had in store for us when we were born. Yeah. Until they slapped the shit out of us, literally. literally. I don't know if they slap the kids anymore. My kid was born today, <laughs> by the way, in my in our den. Yeah. And there's something, by the way, I was convinced that you have to go to a hospital, you have to empower doctors, yeah. you have to do it this way, you've got to get an epidural and all that. Really? Is that how we were born? Like centuries ago, there was no epidurals. Oh yeah. You know, you gave birth naturally. And my wife was the one that convinced me to say, no, that's the way it was. Mm. And that's the way it still can be. Yeah. And we did this thing. We did a water birth oh, amazing. for our child. Now I'm not saying it's because of that, but he is the most um, transformed already human being. And that started like three, four years old. He was already transformed into this, beautiful old soul being yeah. that nothing set, set puts him off his course. Right. Nothing. He doesn't care about popularity. He doesn't care that he's the shortest in the school. Doesn't care. Mm. I was the shortest in the school. I'm six, two now, but it uh, completely, I suffered. You're talking about, I yeah. suffered. They, they wedgied me. They put my head in the toilet. Yeah. They beat me. They, hung, they put me in lockers and stuffed me in trash cans. Yeah. All that stuff happened because I walked around as victim of being short. Mm. I brought that in magnetically. He doesn't, nobody picks on him. And even if they say, hey, shorty or whatever, it doesn't matter to him. He doesn't need adulation. He doesn't need praise. If I praise him, I told him I wrote a piece about him and other people said, he should read this. He goes, nah, it's okay. Ooh, he's like a zen. He's zen. He's he's saying, he's right. He didn't want to hear. I said, yeah. I wrote this beautiful piece. Everybody said, that's okay, dad. I'm good. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. how wise is that? You know, because he's just going, he cuddles with me naturally. Yeah. It's almost like he knows when I am suffering. That he just quietly doesn't go, hey, got anything I can do for you? <laughs> no, he doesn't do any of that. Doesn't yeah. follow anybody's patterns. Just naturally, there he is. Yeah. Just cuddle with me. Probably puts on a show that I want to watch. Let's watch Hard Knocks together. Yeah. Knows I like football. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. just subtle. And it's amazing to... Think and I don't know if it's because of the home birth and the water birth, which yeah. didn't go very well, by the way. Oh, how come? Oh, I ended up pulling him out, and that's not that was not in the coaching oh, yeah. classes. <laughs> well, hopefully, he wasn't struggling too long before you, you let him up. Oh, he was struggling. I mean, he was turned around in her womb, and I had to help turn him around and pull him out. Holy! And then God. there was a big flood. Was, sorry, was there anyone else present? Was yes, a- there was a midwife. Thank God she showed up. Yeah. I could not have done that. There's a movie. There's an old movie when. Uh, I haven't seen it since I was a little kid. It's a, yeah. called Gone with the Wind. Oh, yeah. Great movie. Yeah. That's and, a, and a she, kinda, a I literally felt like uh, Miss Sissy, I think was her name. I don't know nothing about birth of no babies. <laughs> that's what I was like. I don't know nothing about birth of, And that's what it was like because they were going, you are going to help here. Okay, and I was can like, I, whoa. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Some, my friends are all having babies en masse now at, at my age, right? So they're all they're banging out two, three a week by the looks of it. So my question. Wow, that's, that's a miracle <laughs> in and of itself. What are they, a Wolverine? Yeah. I, <laughs> but I guess when, when, you, when you were there and this – thing that very few people get to see or have many multiple millions of people get to see, but not everybody expects what they're about. Like, what did you experience when this, in this moment where life came into the world? It had happened before because I have two older children, but yeah. Yeah. having been a part of th- bringing this life in yeah. was definitely significantly different because this really was getting into the process, getting into, yeah. this was no joke. Like the other, you know, you, those you coaching classes. You're that? going to get this one right. You might have messed up the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I definitely messed up the other ones. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, no, it's true. <laughs> I, I, I did because I didn't know what I was doing mm. and I didn't have a partner that was in uh, connection with me. Yeah. I had an enemy as a partner, my ex-wife. Literally, like... Yeah. From the birth of our child on, I was the enemy. And it was really, really difficult to to accept that, to live with that. Now, my acceptance of it now is doing me much more uh, good than yeah. my lack of acceptance, which is also the key to everything, too. So when you get into acceptance, you get into radical acceptance, yeah. there's where the peace is going to come in. 
What would be an example, uh, Craig, of radical acceptance? Okay, for instance, uh, I'll give you one that's a little softer. Um, I probably talked about it on, uh, but I have a, a rift with my mom for years. Okay. She's Irish, by the way. Got her Irish citizenship. Oh, good, yeah. Yeah. Where yeah, are you from in Ireland? Uh, Dublin. 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 Oh, okay. She's County Cork. Here, if you, have you got your Irish citizenship? No, she does. No, but here, if you can get it. You, oh, really? You get it now. So then you have at least Europe to go to if you need. If, <laughs> if this place falls apart. <laughs> That's right. Could happen. Yeah. So, yeah, radical acceptance. So um, there was a moment where I had lots of reasons to say that she was not a good mom. Like, you know, what kind of mother would do, what kind of mother would side with my ex-wife who was accusing me of the most heinous crimes imaginable? Yeah. What kind of mom would do that? And I use that as like my shield to be being vulnerable, which is another truth thing that's yeah. very important in life yeah. is to be vulnerable. Yeah. And it's very hard for someone's conditioned the way all of us are, and very let hard. alone me in Philadelphia with no dad. Oh, absolutely. And very hard to be truthful if everybody around isn't trained not to attack. Like if, yeah. if people aren't trained to, to allow for forgiveness Allow oh. people to repent, allow people to change their ways, allow people to erase the history on Twitter from 10 years ago. Right. Like we need to leave people alone and let them live in the present. Let them the, find their process. The pre yeah. And their own discoveries. Yeah. How could have I have had this discovery or any discoveries even about sexism or racism? How can I have the discoveries when you're pressuring me and telling me I'm already supposed to be perfect? Oh, yeah. And you're telling me you're going to remove my job because my process isn't up to your standards of where I should be. Absolutely. That's what's going on right now. It's like, whoa, whoa, give me a chance. Just listen, awaken me, give me some information to use, yeah. but don't condemn me because now I'm condemned forever. And now that my whole pathway is completely off because I'm now defending myself and I can't be in presence. Yes. And, and you can't be in presence because they've literally yeah. forced you right. and everybody who's observing you right. to focus on past or the fear of the future. Focus on the past and defend the past and so on. And, you know, uh, I had a woman accuse me recently of, I mean, I heard a rumor that uh, these people at a comedy club said I was inappropriate with her or whatever. I don't know how far she went with it, but I went, I Instagrammed her yesterday. She still hasn't gotten back to me. I said, you know what? I have a different take on what went down. And if I were to tell anyone what my take was, it would not make you look good. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I have, but I kept it to myself and I will talk to you about it, but she had to go and gossip and give her version. And usually when people do that, they're, they're, they're heading it off at the pass because they really know that they're the ones who are guilty. Yeah, well, it's terrible. It's ter but uh, as a man, by the way, you know, who's going to get that tag well, here very quickly. And by the way, well-deserved because of the centuries of men being bad patriarchs. I get it, uh, but it's not the case here. But women now use that, including my ex-wife. They use that to their advantage. But back to the radical acceptance. So my mom, very difficult relationship and didn't speak to the, uh, I don't know if that's an Irish thing. My mom uh, always claims Irish this and Irish that, that uh, they do this. and they uh, do. We, got, we got a good mix over there. But uh, I'd, I'd love, no, that's not typical Irish. I would say Irish people are fairly stoic. In general. Is that right? Fairly okay. stoic. Like a good stoic? Like Marcus Aurelius stoic? Uh, that's that's what I think people are aiming for. You uh, think so? Yeah. Okay. I uh, All right. My mom keeps encouraging me to go Irish, uh, and I've resisted for years. Yeah. I go the opposite way. Yeah. You know, because I have all these shame spots with being Irish. Oh, yeah. That, well, that's, yeah. It's there's a lot of shame attached to it because there's a yeah. lot of victimhood and there's yeah. a lot of resentment. There's a lot of bitterness and resentment that's carried. It's a Irish Alzheimer's as you forget everything except a grudge. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah, so. well, and I'm not happy with that yeah, yeah. paradigm. I don't want that in my life. I don't want to live like that. Yeah. I don't want to live with, you know, there's the rumor that's, you know, there's heavy drinking. I don't want to drink anymore. You know, I mean, it's not my jam, you know, well, so. That's, that's the, big, the biggest trick that what all the good books are about. All the books that are whatever religion, God thing you want to read about. It's all about pulling people out of, like literally the future is manufactured. Mm -hmm. The future takes place in the present. It's just an imagination thing, right? right? And the past, they, everyone wants you to lament the past, focus on the past and blah, blah, blah. But the past, memory retrieval takes place in the present. There's literally only now. So this, that's a completely artificial, delusional world. Mm -hmm. And enlightened people are literally just saying, wake up, you've been sold the future right. and the past. Yeah. Just live in the present. Right. Accept, forgive, move on, 
improve, leave people alone, we're dying. That's literally all enlightened people or people who are moving towards enlightenment are trying to say. Mm-hmm. And that this, th- there is a state of nirvana, heaven, whatever you want to call it. That's right, yeah. There's a state of nirvana in the present that's acceptable or accessible to everyone. And there, there are many moments. They're not many just, moments. You don't live there all the time. And then the people that are you know, speculating and you know, yeah. calling you a hypocrite. Yeah, we all go off the path. Yeah. But I have that path much more often now yeah. because of these radical acceptances that I do. So with yeah. my mom, mm-hmm. I realized one day, I won't go into the whole story. I probably have already in the podcast. But there came to be a moment where I went, oh. You're expecting, you're putting unreasonable expectations on her. Why would you do that to another human being, even though it's your mom? Yeah. Take out the mom from it. I wouldn't want it done to me, and I defend myself on it not being done to me, unreasonable expectations, and all that that's put on me, resentments and, you know, misplaced rage and all that. Why would I do that to someone else? Yeah. And I stopped on a dime. I stopped, and I learned how to completely reframe it to appreciation, to listening, to connection, to being open, open open-minded, open spirit, open heart. And that's all, that's part of the acceptance. So whenever she says anything that she would say from the past, Mm -hmm. which is a pattern, it's, you know, going to die that way. Yeah. I just go, oh, I take a sacred pause. I create a new space. And to create the space that I now create is each one is in the now. It's okay that she says that. It's okay that she resists. Yeah. It's just who she is. So accepting who she is, yeah. that it's not going to change, not make any boundaries. Yeah. You know, you hear about these boundaries and stuff. What yeah. a bunch of bullshit boundaries are. Yeah. They're your boundaries. I mean, it's like, so it becomes, you know, we read books and we hear about, you know, buzzwords like boundaries and things like that. They're not real. There's no one that lives to your boundaries. Yeah. No one. So therefore, I took all boundaries out, all rules out, and I just accept her for who she is, and I laugh my ass off with my mom now. And we have a divine love that's so beautiful, and it's never, ever been like that. Did that allow her, did your response to her allow her to let her guard down? Exactly, and guess what? She apologized to me. She apologized for, there's a couple biggies for me. I'm like, boof, you know, that's, that's not a good mom. Yeah. You know, I was kidnapped when I was a kid, a serial pedophile, and my mom just recently brought it up again. Basically, like, I'm so sorry. I just didn't know what else to do. And we, talk, we discussed it. We had an open discussion. It was fine. I completely said, Mom, you've completely forgiven. Take that off of her, that burden off of her that she's been sitting with. So I'm not blaming her. I'm actually doing the opposite. It's full forgiveness and full acceptance. And when we get into those places, you know, you know Forgive them for they know not what they do. I think that's in the Bible, oh right? Oh, my God. And she doesn't, didn't know what she was doing, and she told me the story about her mom yeah. not handling a pedophile, you know, the way it should have, yeah. and that guy got away with it and so forth. Yeah. So it was just a patterning. And by the way, her pattern will probably change, but one pattern that has changed for her, because yeah. I just invited this new space, is she says, I love you all the time. That wasn't... That wasn't part of our jam before. You know, yeah. it was a lot of like, oh, it's just a struggle and, and she you know, says fight, it now, and fight now, to be right. And, and she says it and now you have to let it in. How weird is oh, it? Oh, that's not easy How either. weird is it? I uh, started seeing a, a, a lovely lady recently and uh-huh. uh, I'm just getting to the point now where I can, you know, accept either a compliment or... or not easy, Allow right? the joy that she has within mm. her permeate my soul. Yeah. And... Now, as crazy as that sounds to, say, me two, three years ago, what I'm realizing is it's all, energetically, we, we're all cross-pollinating mm-hmm. yeah. in terms of ideas, thoughts, energy. And for you to allow, say, your mother to say that and that hit you and actually feel it like it, as truth, oh, truth is much more complex than maybe somebody who is uh, a little more open. Would and by the way... Here's why I just thought of this. It's far better than her going, you know what? I was an asshole mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if she ever said yeah. something like that, that would not connect with me. Yeah. I don't, you know, that's the thing is we keep seeking people to say certain things that we think are going to absolve us. Yeah. We think that that's going to release us and give us our freedom. No, it never comes from them. It only comes from our own choices. And I made these choices many times, this radical acceptance and so on, forgiveness. And these are the tools that give lead to the, my freedom yeah. because I, they're my warden. Otherwise yeah. they're deciding 
yeah. that I stay there because but, but I'm putting myself there. I've got the key all along yeah. to get out of the jail. I've got the, the it's, it's been sitting right there. Yeah. Damn it. I've been yelling out of the bars. Hey, you release me for yeah. God's sake. Yeah, you need to do this. Yeah. You're the warden. You're yeah. The, you're, I'm you're my own warden. Yeah. You're the exactly. person who controls yeah. perception. Yeah. That's exactly right. Within the instrument that is your body. So yeah, I'm not on parole. I'm just completely free. Yeah, bro. And it's amazing. And and happened with my ex-wife recently. Happened with my one son that I'm having difficulty with. Let him go. Let him go. It's never going to happen. I'm, I'm doing it with my wife. You know, she's, there's certain things. I'm going, why can't you? Da, 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 da. Mm. You think anybody's going to listen to that? Yeah. I have to tell myself that all the time. That's got to be a mantra is telling someone, yeah. why can't you? You're basically saying to them, you're better than they are. Why can't you be what I'm telling you to be? Because I know better. That's what you're telling them, yeah. which is another thing for me to keep on looking at is people think I'm arrogant. You know what I mean? They think well, well, because of the way I phrase things and things like that, they think, oh, oh, look at you. Yeah, you're not so perfect. And then what you do is you subject yourself to their criticism and then you defend. And what a, what a system that is. It's a bad cycle. Uh, humility. If yeah. being humble is ext- or being humble or uh, relaxed is extremely threatening. To people who aren't humble or relaxed. <laughs> Extremely oh, oh, threatening. They'll fight you. Yeah, because yeah. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but if, if you can bring the energy, if you're, I mean, Gandhi's a good example. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe not in his private life, but in his, <laughs> in his public life, uh, there's nothing more terrifying than someone who's not, uh, not afraid to suffer and look you in the eyes as it's happening. Right. And... Um, I found that when people come at me with, say, some sort of controlling energy or some statements or some negativity, I, I'm employing a little bit of what you do, which is uh, take a breath, take a breath, separate myself from them consciously in the present. So I'll just say, oh, these people are, these people are coming at me with so, probably some energy that they picked up during the day, and then I'm just willing to sidestep it. I don't need to win the engagement. No. The and you younger, never do. The younger me might have wanted to There's win. the misnomer. There's no winning. Just look at the wars. Just look at the Afghanistan yeah. situation. We're dying. <laughs> look, at the, look, at, look at Afghanistan just yeah. as an example. Yeah. We went in there with obviously all the wrong reasons. Obviously, we bought all the lies. Mm-hmm. We buy the lie of patriotism. We buy the lie of, you know, uh, the people who, who oppose it are traitors. We buy all of that. Mm-hmm. What a patriot is. We buy the whole thing. And now... At the end of the day, when we see, we didn't learn our lesson from Vietnam or mm. Korea or anything else. We didn't learn a lesson. Mm. Now we're stuck in the same exact position where people are just blaming, finger pointing, yeah. victims, and there's nobody saying, you know what? I was in on that. I was in on that false oh, yeah. premise, that lie, mm-hmm. that rhetoric, that propaganda. Mm. We think that propaganda is other countries like Goebbels or Germany or or Russia with Putin. No. no, we have propaganda right here that we buy yeah. because they sell it every single day. But oh, until yeah. you get in alignment with yourself, you can't come to that realization. Absolutely. You're just going to be constantly conned. Absolutely. That's why getting out into nature and suffering a little bit or just being cold or jumping into the water, that will literally shock your body into a, into a state of consciousness that, uh, you know, you're not surrounded by these competing narratives. People trying to, Send, yeah. send your attention and your awareness in different directions. The Egyptians actually used to worship attention. That's why they have the big eye. They're very, they were very aware that if you... I think they worship getting attention. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, well, they definitely <laughs> did that too. They're doing well. <laughs> they won that one. But like, yeah, just, just attention and where our attention goes yeah. is, is really what we all need to control. And if we do basically mm. pay attention to that other eye... Mm then that is gold. Yeah, it's that gold. is where true happiness sets. Yeah. When they talk about the pursuit of happiness, yeah. we are already born happy. Yeah. That's what this that's what this is about mm. what we're doing here. Yeah. Is we're providing that service for people. And by the way, I probably yeah. have three listeners. Oh, that's great. <laughs> but I, but but it, it, I can't I'm being funny to make a point. I mean, is it's now, not anyway. for the masses right I'll bring, now. I'll bring one. Well, one at a time, yeah. one at a time. That's <laughs> all you got to do is yeah. one at a time. Mm. Uh, people have epiphanies. Yeah. People have uh, 
a lot of people these days are on a search too because oh, yeah. we have been handed our bottom, if oh. you will. Like an alcoholic has a bottom, a drug addict has a bottom, mm. sex addict has a bottom. We as a country, as a world, yeah. are hitting a bottom as never before. Yeah. What are we going to do about that? Are we going to go start another war and go fight someone else, go kill someone else? As if you can kill this off? You can't kill enough people. Afghanistan should tell yeah, you that. Yeah, yeah. They keep surviving. Here they are again. Yeah, beware of anybody. All the purveyors of righteous anger are, are literally controlling you. Righteous anger is the number one force in the world to get people to kill each other and do bad things. So Irish Catholic growing up, I had righteous anger against... This is what it was told to me. I didn't. But I was supposed to have righteous anger against the Protestants and the English. Then, right. Then uh, now, if I'm a Democrat or a Republican, I'm supposed to have righteous Absolutely. anger against somebody else. Oh, now I'm an American. Different scale. So you start yeah. off with the, your, your community, your family. I'm supposed to have righteous anger against my neighbor. I'm supposed to have righteous anger against the next town over. Then the city. Then it becomes national. Then... People, the purveyors of righteous anger, will market that to you like you wouldn't believe, and then you're all of a sudden young guys who have no problem are killing other people who have no problem in a foreign country, all because of righteous anger. Mm -hmm. And um, when you wake up from that, when you realize that you're extremely malleable consciously, and that there are forces that are intentionally trying to make you righteously angry mm -hmm. so that they can migrate your actions in a way that best suits them, which they have an illusion that it best suits you. Yeah. You're yeah. protecting your family. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's all of that stuff. Yeah. And I watch the battles going on when I try to offer that different perspective. Yeah. They will battle to the death mm. to be right in who they believe in. They were empowering and deifying people. Yeah. I've been talking about this for you a gotta while. you got to run away from anyone who's certain. Anyone who's certain is immoral. That's what I, that's what I say even about, uh, even about what's going on with the pandemic. I go... Do you know with a capital K N O W? Yeah. Do you know, or do you think you know, or do you have you been convinced that you know based on a link that you went to, based on the mass media that is paid for and sponsored by? Do you absolutely know? Yeah. Have you unpacked this completely? Yeah. Well, you don't know unless you've experienced it yourself. That's the only way we can actually know. Yeah. You know, you can't go by surveys. You can't go by peer-reviewed things. Yeah. You can't go by debunking. You because you don't know who the debunkers are. You don't know anything. To admit that, you would be so much further in life. To admit that you do not know and you're fighting for what you don't know. Yeah, that's that's the yeah. irony. Yeah, and you've run, I'm sure you've run into it, Craig. So you're you're talking to somebody. You happen to be doing well that day. Whatever. I'm not doing well every day, but the the day that I'm doing well. I'm kind of zen, I'm in alignment. Someone comes up, and then you say, well, actually, it's not. And then they go, and they're creating like mm -hmm. this. This it's, it's weird if you just take the human condition and just look at it like it's kind of funny. There's like somebody blocking blocking their their uh, their ears and their eyes and all sense of perception by just kind of screaming over what you're saying. Programmed responses. They've been literally yeah. programmed for these responses. Yeah. I can actually play a game yeah. where you can predict their next response. Oh, it's fascinating. I've done this before. I, I'll go on private message with one of my yeah. like brighter friends who kind yeah. of are in alignment with me. I'll go, I'll have a disagreement with someone like on Facebook yeah. and I'll go on the private messages and say, here's what and we yeah. have a, like a game yeah. where you can, I can tell exactly where they're going to go yeah. and it's going to end up with, to be some sort of blocking, some sort of like, uh, you know, you're this and you're that. And yeah. it, it does not end well yeah. because people are not after, after being right instead of after being happy. Yeah. And, and that, that is that hand, classic. Classic. And yeah. it happens at both ends of the political spectrum. That's right. And there's a reason there's two ends to the political spectrum because a divided population is very easy to control. It stops you looking at the real root problems. It's That's the right. same in every country globally. They'll have two opposing parties. For centuries. And by they, <laughs> yeah. I just mean legacy yeah. power. Yeah. yeah. It's not that complex. Yeah. If you if if they didn't have a divided England, everyone would be looking probably at the Queen going, hang on a second. What's going on here? <laughs> Why are you involved? How are we buying this? How is this? How is this? How yeah, is this? If anybody going? ever step back, yeah, there's no, there's no which we do yeah. as a joke, but there's nobody literally stepping back and going, you know what? We're going to cut this now. We're yeah. going to cut this whole 
<laughs> yeah, the whole thing, the whole this whole royal thing. Yeah, we're just gonna stop this because we're evolved enough to know yeah. that this absolute BS. The fact that they're watching their weddings by the millions mm. and not stepping back and pausing and yeah. going, "Wait a minute, I just sold a whole thing here with the whole pomp and circumstance and all that, yeah. and the uniforms and everything that they're wearing." The pageantry, this is all part. The pageantry is part of the magic trick. Mm. Do you know what love is? It's a ha- magic trick. Yeah, well, it's the material world. But Anything- people don't want to say, I've been fooled by the magician. They want to go, nah, nah, that's, it's real. No, and it is fascinating, and it's interesting, and it's social dynamics, and we're all fascinated by it, and it's the material world on steroids. It's like crowns, there's structures, there's buildings, <laughs> right? But the, the, the non-material not world- Not earned whatsoever. Not, uh, it, well, argu- arguably not, but you know Earned what? by a sperm- Hitting the right yeah, spot. Well, yeah. That's the only place it's been earned. And 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 that's definitely that's one way to go, right? That's one way to go, Craig. The second, the other way though, if I'm, I'm my best self is the the queen and the princes grew up into that. They grew up into the sauce, so they probably just like us in the same way bought the goods. In the same way to to somebody who's starving. In, in, say, a third world country would look at us and go, oh, my God, they don't know how good they have it. How could they use not use their power for good? It's just different levels of the same problem. Right. So it's third world starving looks at me and you and goes, those s- s- selfish control, like they've right. got it all and they're not yeah. using it for the benevolence yeah. of right. the world. And then we look at the queen and go, oh, she's not. But there's a real chance that everybody on the planet is doing their best with the bullshit they had to put up with in their life. I'd love to believe it, but it's very hard I when don't it's believe coming it. at you. I don't believe people are doing their best. No, there's some evil actors for sure. Yeah, but, but I but I also don't believe that the um, the people believe who believe in the evil actors are doing their best because your best would be I'm not going to empower that person. Mm-hmm. It bothers me so much to see how. I mean, and I'm not being political when I say this because I'm going to go yeah, both yeah. ways yeah, with yeah. this. The way Donald Trump was empowered. Mm to dictate how you feel, how you think he's deciding things. I remember Bush did that. I'm the decider. You know, I, I even I, I just, whoa, 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 you're not my decider. Yeah. I don't care if you got the most votes does not make you the decider. Yeah, very tribal. And other countries, yeah, exactly. That's where the, our biggest problem is tribalism right now. And then, and then now we're, in, and then we have all of the, all the comebacks yeah. that take place when you challenge Donald Trump and they go right to, I could go right down the line of their comebacks. They'll say, yeah. you know, oh, because you're a liberal. Oh, because because he's about telling the truth. Oh, because they, they just bought all of yeah. the propaganda. Yeah. Right? So I'll go right to the other side. It's happening now. It doesn't happen with Biden as much because he's kind of like, he's kind of like, uh, almost like, an, like you don't really hear much from him. Yeah. But the Fauci thing, they have deified and canonized the guy that all their response is, well, he's been in, Seven administrations. Mm. Well, so was J. Edgar Hoover, who was a really bad guy. Oh, yeah. So just because he's made it through these administrations, does that mean that there's no corruption? He's corruption-free, mm. and we should never scrutinize or analyze somebody that's making these huge decisions for us? Oh, yeah, yeah. So am I a Trumper now, which is what happens now? I'm a Trumper because I challenge him, the one they deify. If I go against Trump, then I'm a, I'm, I'm a liberal Biden yeah. lover, Biden ass-kissing. So which is it? Mm. It's neither. I'm neither because I'm not going to empower anybody. Yeah. It's like my higher power is dictating how I live my life. Absolutely. And my choices that I make. So if I make a choice to research more on something as big as putting chemicals in my body, whether that's researching, I just had all these comedians, they just died of of, of cocaine because they had fentanyl because they weren't investigating yeah. they weren't researching far enough yeah. they were convinced that a dealer who handed them and by the way dealers can take the form of a drug company of, of a lawmaker they can take the form in many ways they're dealing yeah. they're convincing you don't look here take and accept what i tell you is the truth everything and is for possible. us not to challenge that is just idiocracy yeah Absolute, absolute idiot. It's absolute idiocracy not to challenge it. And not you know, to challenge. Do you know, do I don't understand yeah, that why mean my you have smart to agree friends with are it. not challenged. No, exactly. No. Just to challenge is just to challenge. Yeah. You're just you're in a discovery process. You don't prosecute based on what yeah. somebody just presents to you from one side. Yeah. You do. You would never. Yeah. That's not a fair jury trial. No. If it's just the prosecutor or the defense that's presenting their case. Yeah. No, you want to hear all sides, and then you get to make the decision. But now, 
that they've empowered Fauci, they have made the decision for us. Mm. Now that they empower Trump, the decisions are made from that perspective as well, like the, the abortion laws. Yeah. And it's just amazing to me that people don't, who bright people yeah. don't understand the concept of dialogue, research, unpacking things, uh, the discovery process. I yeah. don't understand how people throw that out. I do not understand, though. It's fear. Yeah, fear. They're afraid to trust their higher source within that has all of your answers. Yeah, before any... Uh, We're not taught that. No. We're not taught to go next to a tree. You said that about being next to a tree or whatever. There's people listening to this going... This fucking idiot yeah. uh, next to a tree. What's a tree going to teach you? Yeah, yeah, best, best <laughs> a, they're, you got to watch oh, the yeah. news. They're going to, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. Now, people live like that. They go, my yeah. mom, I remember I said, I don't watch the news. She goes, well, how do you know what's going on? It's only going on from their perspective. They choose Absolutely. criminals. Well, here, they just, choose who any, you if see. If anyone's confused about uh, going into nature, just remember that everything you know, there was a time before cell phones when you weren't consuming eight hours of content that somebody else wanted you to consume. Yeah. There was eight hours of you doing things that you Except wanted this, to do on the Except for this, by the way, this 40 no, this, minutes. This, this 40 minutes, I encourage you all. No, watch it on repeat. Absolutely, yes. It will repeat. Yeah. I have a number of episodes. Inject Just it into your keep arm. Us on, keep us on yeah. a loop while you're next to the yeah. tree. You could be floating down a raft on yeah. a river and just take us with you. Mm. <laughs> yeah. They, and we I, are an alternative, though. This is definitely not out there in mainstream. No, we're, yeah. we're on a stream that's yeah. No, I think I think somewhere I else. think this stream, and I think you're in a, you're front running the stream, Craig, because that pandemic gave a lot of people time to sit and think, and generally mm -hmm. on their own. And when you're on your own, and you, if if you just if anyone's f having trouble following any of these thoughts, which I I don't think a lot of your listeners would because they know what what we're doing here, but you're basically a point of awareness, and if you have any doubts about that, just look at the tip of your nose and realize that there's something in there observing the world. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily the meat body, right? So the one thing that remains consistent, all your cells will change throughout, throughout your whole life. I don't know how many multiple times. But that point of awareness is, uh, is one of the few things that remains consistent. So that's probably what religions refer to as the soul. Now, the problem with religions is they're trying to co-opt a power that is given to every individual on the planet irrespective of government and when you're born on the planet you are and have everything you need and then you're told that there's a deficit and they do that through marketing the future and the past is so that you're distracted from the present where you need nothing everything's always all right in the present if you were being tortured or or you know they're still in the very present there is no suffering and then all these people who are up the mountains, all these religious people, they're not, there's a real chance, how about this, hundreds of thousands, millions of people, four centuries, are doing something that we're not doing today. Mm -hmm. They're spending time alone, meditating. And then people say, yeah, well, I'm not religious, I, wouldn't, I don't pray. It's like, oh, but you do your intentions in the morning. Mm -hmm. Have you considered there might be a parallel between praying and intentions? And it's just, a, it's just semantics. So a lot, of times, a lot of times praying, you're petitioning. You're yeah. petitioning for what you want. Yeah, you're petitioning. Not, you're not asking to receive mm. what your higher source wants you to receive. Yeah. If you could be in a state of listening instead mm. of instead of commanding, demanding, if you're in that state, yeah. your higher source, your presence, your awareness, your mindfulness, it will always dictate you and take you to the right pathway. Yeah. And, and, it, and, always. It, and it strengthens over time. Here's the gnarliest thing. So if you get a glimpse of it for even a second of this thing you'll remember it for the rest of your life but if you work it like you would any other muscle in the gym it it will it will increase your sensitivity to base reality mm -hmm. and it will allow you to navigate the world with such ease and so little suffering in comparison to people who don't have this in their life yeah meditation i think increases iq They've, been, they've shown by 7%. It didn't work for me, right? <laughs> uh, but, it, but it also lowers blood. It probably did. It lowers blood pressure. By uh, the way, you know what I do? Guided laughitation. What? Talk us through that. I do a guided laughitation. Uh, how does that happen? You want to do one right now? Yeah, bro. Okay, here, here we go. I'm already laughing. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> well, that's good. That's how you start. You start yeah. the engine 
When I was a kid, your engine didn't start right away. You had to warm it up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's no, what that's... you do. So, yeah, let a little giggle. <laughs> <laughs> See how easy that is? I, I feel so good. Take, right. take a breath in through your nose and let out a ha. 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 Listen to that vibrato. Listen to what ha does to you. Ha starts the cleansing ah. process. You're starting to yeah, see you're clearing out all those cobwebs, ah. all those distractions <laughs> that they want you to buy into, right? What does ha ah. do? Hallelujah. You're <laughs> celebrating life. Ha. Now you're going to let up. Ready? Follow me. And ha. How good does that feel? Those big, deep breaths. Yeah, look at That's that. That's real, bro. Isn't that really yeah. cool? Uh, there's more. There's more. Here we go. Here we go. Watch this. <laughs> Laughter is contagious. There's no way that you energetically cannot feel what I'm giving to you and you give back to me. And people who are even listening right now, they're going to, okay, now we're going to let out. By the way, your body does not know that you're faking the laughter because it's very real what's going on. <laughs> Here we now. go. And... <laughs> 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 Watch your breath is engaged, your heart, yeah. your skin, your your <laughs> circulatory system, your eyes, you're crying, you're letting out all of this fear, all these doubts, all these worries are being let out just like meditation, but it's more active. It activates. It activates parts of our body that are just dormant and just sitting there. Now, here we go again. And <laughs> it's silly, right? It's silly, but it's fantastic. Put this out on the line. But just, this should just go ahead. <laughs> this is a meme. All right, there's more. There's more. Okay. Now you say out loud what you're suffering from. Okay. What's your difficulty? What's your obstacle, right? You know, oh, uh, so immigration. You say, you say it out loud. There, there we go. Say it out loud. Immigration's <laughs> fucking me. He might get deported. <laughs> I might have to sneak across the fucking bar. <laughs> I'm living in my car. <laughs> oh, my God. He might sleep in my house tonight. <laughs> I'm a little. I mean, who even knows? Who knows? The world. Ah, uh, uh, now take yeah. a breath, uh, th breath in, <laughs> breathe in through your nose, and let out a cleansing. Ha! Ah, feel the peace. Feel what comes over you. Think about your stress level. How it just went from maybe an eight or a seven down to a three or a two or maybe even a zero. Anyone out there who's following along, you do the same. <sighs> pay attention listen heed what's going on inside of you the light that's inside of you has now been cleared there's no there's nothing but you your higher source the peace that you are the happiness that you are the fulfilled mindful brilliant person that you are that's who exists right here in this space this is the space we create. <sighs> Just feel that. Hopefully you went along with us and did that. There's no way you can't laugh or giggle. I mean, some of the programming, you might get angry and go, look at these idiots. But we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing, when, when, when you realize it's a show, the whole thing is everybody's acting. Yeah. Like literally, they came to the earth. Yeah. T tabla rasa. And then through nature and nurt nurture, they became something. And then they've held on to that character, and now they're putting it on TV, and they're putting it out there in an angry way. If you just kind of realize it's all pageantry, the whole thing. And then in silence and stillness and nature, base reality, absolute clarity. It's all ridiculous. Do you know, and do you know I just did a laughitation on my way to a golf championship, right? Did you win? And I did, <laughs> I did this laughitation, and I said, within this out loud, you're expressing out loud. By the way, what you come out of it as at the right. end of it, you realize how meaningless things are. Oh, the yeah. meaning you put onto it is putting your own pressure on. You have to have this win based on something from your past yeah. and some reward system that we're in, right? Yeah. This doesn't do that. When you do a laughitation, it breaks free of all of that. All past is gone. You're just in the present. You're just you're literally breathing. You're yeah. coming one with you know, with your source. Yeah. 
And I did one and I expressed out loud the pains that I've had when I was a child with just terrible stuff revolving around sports. I didn't have a dad, so I went out for the sports. I bought the wrong glove on the wrong hand because I thought you throw with the same hand you catch with and I'd throw the glove down and throw the ball. I didn't know what I was doing. That's... It was embarrassing. It was filled with shame. The worst glove, the worst equipment, yeah. all that stuff, being you know raised in a rich neighborhood and golfing with them and I brought football spikes and they wouldn't let me on the green because the greens, the spikes would make holes and all that stuff came up in my lapidation. And I realized, what does it all mean? What does that mean? What does that mean to, to today? Mm. To this thing that I've made it all this way for five months, I was fighting for this championship or, you know, really I moved forward and forward. I kept winning and winning, you know, this, this club championship. And it, I'm at a country club, a poor kid from Philadelphia with no yeah. father is at a country club. So you get into appreciation, you get into the now, you get into the gratitude. Of yeah. It. And I got to that space and I kicked ass yeah. and won the championship. All from getting in the lapidation space of what is real. And the real truth is in the now. It's not from my past as a child who was abused and things like that. I don't need to own that. They don't own me. I can own myself. And I own that and won. You know? And by the way, when I would go off of it, when I go off of the, pl the pleasures and the happiness, I would hit a lousy shot because yeah. I was into outcomes. When you're lafitating, you're not into any outcome. You're not any agenda. You're agenda free. You're free. In that moment, you literally cannot be depressed at the same time you're laughing. You cannot be angry at the same time you're laughing. Try that. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Francis. I hate you. Well, Why you, did you come here today, <laughs> you Irish prick? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking <I> obtuse American. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Bro, there is. There, you you see what I'm saying? I, I you can't. Can. I've got an endorphin rush. Yes, exactly. And I, I exactly. wonder, I yeah. wonder, is that rewiring and, and re kind of filing my negative thoughts exactly. with a positive emotion? Exactly. Did you, I wonder, is that's that exactly what it is? That's cool, dude. That's the chemistry. That's like a brain hack. Exactly. That's what I want to do. That's, that's what, what I'm doing. That's why I like. One at a time, that yeah. word's going to get out that we have another option. Yeah. Other than, you know, beating something with the club, yeah, you know, whatever it is, a baseball bat or attack or yelling or whatever it is, we do have another option to yeah. explore. Yeah. And it's just got to be there. I got to get that out. Yeah. And it works. You know, every time I do it, actually, I was on a team, another golf story, I was on a team, and we laughed our asses off. You know yeah. what the topic was? Yeah. I would step up to the team and go, I'm going to fuck your wife up the ass. <laughs> I would go, please. <laughs> then I pull out pictures. I go, really? And they would do, uh, uh, and then I would step up. I'm going to suck her toes. Ah! And I laugh, bam, right down the fairway. And then we laughed about I had horrible shots when they stopped doing it. I go, can you tell me what you want to do to my wife next time? And we dominated. We won by more strokes. Well, that's because we had the most fun. Yeah, I. So if you can have fun, oh, dark humor, doing whatever it is. Yeah, of course it's I dark humor. I love it. No, but you know the way the world we're living in now. People can't. Well, that was a serious thing you said. No, you can't. That's yeah, there's literally. I had somebody tell me the other day process. what I'm supposed to use my platform for. Yeah. You should be doing this. You should be promoting vaccines. Yeah. I said you're going to tell me what I should be doing. Yeah. We're down to that. Oh yeah. Well, here, go go talk to it. Go hang around with a homicide detective or soldiers on the front line or whatever, and see how many jokes they're cracking per minute. They're they're hitting more laughs per minute than a professional comedian. I'm telling you, they're talking about everything. It's the only option. Everything. It's a safety mechanism, and you're kind of doing the same here. Yeah. So the, the so the negative is coming at That's you, right. yeah. and you're laughing it off. How else are you supposed to deal with the Laugh. world? And all these people trying to be solemn all the time. It's just we used to have it. A, we have, I don't know if you yeah. had this saying grow up in Ireland. Yeah. But our parents would go, you know, hey, what, you know, you get injured, walk it off. Walk it off. I like that. I, I have laugh it off. Yeah, laugh Both it off is healthier. Laugh it off is so healthy because when yeah. you're walking it off, you're ignoring it. Mm. You're ignoring it. You're just pushing it, deflecting it. I'm about embrace it. Mm. That's what that saying it out loud is embracing it. Embracing the truth. It is true that these things are yeah. inside of me. That is the truth that I have the shame and this blame and this victimhood. This is the way I was yeah. raised and it's, a, you know, the lack and, 
you know, all that lack that dictates who I am today, that I'm afraid to ask for what I need or what I want, all of that still stays with me. What am I going to do about that? That's what, that's what laughitation does. Dude, that's, that's alchemy of the highest order. That's what I call it. It's alchem- using humor, alchemizing humor and turning it into gold. Yeah. Yeah, we turn our laughter into gold. Do you know how, do you know how great that is? Because it's so simple. I know, yeah. People, well, I just started a course. You're going to have to make it more Anybody complex. Anybody wants to sign up for my course, <laughs> just Okay. You can take the course as well. Yeah. I don't know if a homeless guy is going to afford me. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just kidding. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, uh, just for the sake of sharing that, I'm, in, yeah. I'm enjoying it. So I'm in, I'm in between work visas. So I'm a, I'm a tourist here. So I'm just enjoying hanging out. And oh, nice. Can't, so I'm doing, this, doing these things, you know, for fun. And so, uh, Where can we find you on social media? Oh, uh, Francis Cronin, F-R-A-N-C-I-S-C-R-O-N-I-N. Just put it in. I'm all over the place doing Francis Cronin. Nothing. Cronin's yeah. a very Irish name, isn't yeah. it? Yes. Yeah, but I'm, yeah. Kevin I'm Cronin it. of REO Speedwagon. He lives right over here. Oh, does he? Good friend of mine. Yes, he's a leader of REO, and I'm sure you guys That's are related. That's a big band. Yeah, probably sisters. I should have had him come over, you know. Just to say, this is two just crumbs. to say to you, hey, I heard it through a friend you were here. Well, that's I heard it through cool. a friend who. Yeah, that's heard it through cool. a friend who. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, great to have yeah, you. Man. I'm so glad I reached out. Something spoke to me, and I uh, hope you enjoyed yourself today. I did. Craig. I believe that you did. Yeah, dude, you're and a wise dude. Thanks for sharing those I, insights. I did as well. It was great meeting you a few years ago when you were walking from uh, one place in California to the other, and I'm not talking about down the block. <laughs> he was a, yeah. he really San Francisco to L.A. It's a long way, but. Uh, I met you and you performed on a stage that I was on. It yeah. was awesome. It was, was great. Huge. Great to meet you, man. And uh, I'm so happy that you graced us with your presence here today. Well, th- thank you, Craig. And I think the reason that I, I remember you most is just before you went on stage, you were doing some meditation. Ah. And I've never met another stand-up comedian really? who in the green room was doing it. Wow. I think Russell Brand does. Yeah, He's very heavy in oh. the TM and stuff. But yeah. that, yes. And by the way, if you are a comic, I do mentor comics and... Uh, have done so for years. Uh, so listen to Francis. That's something that's uh, probably going to be of value to you. It's not on the list usually. It's not green room conversation. Yeah. They're going, hey, did you meditate? No, they're going to go, hey, how'd you get that gig? Yeah. So uh, yeah, get out of those agendas and really get into yourself. And that's what I would encourage. And also, one thing I always want you to take with you is enlighten the fuck up, will you? I'll see you next time. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. <laughs>